Over half a year ago, Executable fixed leaked details about Zen 4 that included a render of the back of Raphael. And of course, he also followed that up quickly with the front render that Lisa Su just confirmed. I also leaked my information on Raphael just a day after him last year, and many others followed both of us as well. It all pointed to pretty similar stuff. Uh, a bit more I.O. than Zen 3, although it was seemingly 50-50 if it would get PCIe 5.0, and now we know that it seems like they will probably go forward with it for the consumer platform. Although I still say probably because I still find the wording in some interviews and presentations weird. AM5 features an LGA socket and includes a support for PCI Express Gen 5, DDR5 memory, and much, much more. So I think... AMD is trying to make sure they're careful with their wording because a lot of their lineup at the end of this year with Zen 4 will probably still lack 5.0. It's hard to do. It's expensive. But uh, yeah. Anyways, one thing I didn't have in that leak from May last year is something that Executable Fix and some others did, and that was the prevalence of a 170 watt model for AM5. I think most people assume it's either a mega APU or some insanely overclocked Zen 4 gaming chip. What it isn't is what WCCF Tech's post purported it to be in a recent leak. Now, don't worry, this video will cover some new Zen 4 whispers in details, but first I do want to tackle this leak here because it really doesn't make sense. And this year, unlike last year, I want to get ahead of a lot of the leaks that I can confirm are just complete bullshit before the community goes crazy with them. So the first thing I think of when I see this here is that this screams lazy Photoshop. And to be honest, I've actually seen layouts like this sent to me from bullshit leakers in my email. So I might literally know who this came from. So I did reach out to actually a lot of people who work actually both at AMD and Intel who design chips and they all said the same thing. This doesn't make sense. I'm going to decide that it's not worth it for me to tell you all of the technical details as to why this wouldn't work. But the fact of the matter is it wouldn't work in the way at the very least it was portrayed. That both AMD and actually Intel sources told me that based on their understanding of how previous Zen and future Zen architectures will work, there are key features that are just entirely missing from this and key things about the organization that would make it very hard to manufacture and do correctly. And basically, what was made clear is that if this wasn't a bullshit leak, that this was, of course, not the original schematic from within AMD, that at best, this was an abstraction taken from a real AMD source. But then, okay, let's run with this assumption that the leak could be from a leaker that didn't understand what they were looking at from original AMD source material. There's still a huge red flag here that you would have seen on the source material that damns this leak for me harder than anything else. And that's the fact that at least in the title of this article, it's called Raphael. I'm aware that there were 24 core designs. I said that in May of 2021, and I talked about the possibility of a 32 core on AM5. But, you know, immediately after that early Raphael whisper, I had a few sources reach out to me and tell me, hey, hey, hey. Well, there could be a 24 or 32 core Zen 4 thing, maybe on AM5. It will not be called Raphael. Genoa is 96 cores. Bergamo is 128 cores. They are not the same product. This is something that is not confused within AMD. And we know officially that Genoa is 96 cores. And the general layout is leaking right now. So basically what this leak alleges is that Raphael... And Genoa secretly doubled cores overnight and AMD hasn't told anyone yet despite announcing it a little bit. And the renders looking like what Executable Fix already leaked with 16 cores. And that's because they're not going to have some weird client Raphael that can't share chiplets with Genoa. It doesn't make any sense. I would argue it almost has to either share it with Genoa or with Bergamo, and that means either 8 or 16 cores, and this certainly isn't what Bergamo looks like. I know that personally. Guys, I'm sorry. This leak is just bullshit. But there definitely is something that uses 170 watts that AMD's playing with, and I want to talk about what it might be, but first an ad from a sponsor. Reese, you need to calm down. You really need to start looking for a way to manage your anxiety. Reese here could use a little help managing her anxiety. And frankly, we could all use a little help bettering ourselves at the beginning of this new year. What are you trying to improve about yourself in 2022? 
Whatever it is, the Fabulous app was created to help you. Fabulous makes it easy for anyone to develop and stick to healthy habits thanks to science-backed daily routines. It breaks down scientifically proven healthy habits into very small tasks that you can achieve every single day, whether that's more healthy sleeping and wake-up routines, more exercise, more moderate drinking habits, anything Fabulous is 100% personalized, and that's because everyone has different lifestyles and goals. Fabulous allows you to keep track of progress and routines through personalized programs called Journeys. By understanding your goals, Fabulous has dedicated Journeys to help develop healthy habits that will benefit your well-being. And if you'd like some more support, the Circle feature allows you to become part of the community with thousands of Fabulous users trying to accomplish the same goals as you for peer support and extra motivation. Those two features amongst many are the most interesting ones to me and make me sure that Fabulous can help anyone with their 2022 New Year's resolution. But honestly, the most important thing about this app is that I know that it's based on research and data and science based in its recommendations. It's not just a self-help app with colors. It actually has basis in science with all of these features. Support Moore's Law is Dead and support a healthier life for yourself by clicking the link in the description. The first 100 people who click the link will get 25% off their yearly premium subscription to Fabulous. And well, it really helps the channel a lot if you click this link. Let's just be honest. Improve yourself by downloading the Fabulous app today. All right, so if that one leak was bullshit and multiple chip engineers tell me it fundamentally doesn't make sense, at least how it was shown, then what is that 170 watt model? Well, the first thing to make clear is it seemingly is something. Now, these are two of my best sources, and I am told directly that at least as of recently, the 120 watt model is the 16 core Raphael, likely what Lisa Shu showed on stage at five gigahertz. Now let's see Ryzen 7000 and Zen 4 in action for the first time. What you're seeing is 1080p gameplay footage of Halo Infinite running on a pre-production five nanometer Ryzen processor. To give you an idea of why we're so excited about Zen 4, you can see beautiful gameplay at very high frame rates. And I can tell you that all of those Zen 4 cores are running at five gigahertz during this demo. So that thing is already boosting higher than Zen 3 while using 20% more energy than a 5950X. Yeah, that's what you would expect on five nanometers. Supposedly that's what Raphael is. It is 120 watts, 16 cores, that's Raphael, that's the gaming model. And the 170 watt model is something special. But what is odd is that no one I ask legitimately seems to know what it is. So I guess this is where a little bit of speculation comes in from my channel here. Really, it can only be one of a few things, either some super gaming variant of Zen 4 that's so different they say it isn't standard Ryzen, probably with more than just standard Vcash, or it's something involving Zen 4 Cloud, maybe a 32 core, so two times 16 cores instead of two times eight cores, or maybe it's a mega APU. And personally, I think the most interesting thing AMD could do was to actually bring some kind of 32 core Zen 4 cloud, you know, shared with Bergamo to AM5, maybe not at the end of 2022, because my sources tell me it's probably not coming out this year, but maybe at the beginning of 2023. Now, a lot of people would say, well, we know Raptor Lake is 8 plus 16. Why would an AMD go with 8 plus 16 themselves? Why would they go with 16, you know, just or just 32 little cores? Well, I, I think you've got to think about it this way. Uh, AMD is likely to win in gaming versus Raptor Lake, or at least tie it while using significantly less energy, right? What we know about Raptor Lake is that, first leaked by me, it's going to be 8 big cores and 16 little cores. Now, this will be something that will probably have around 10% better single-threaded performance. It will come with clock speeds at least as good as the 12900KS, which is confirmed, so that's big. And then it will probably also, again, have 5 to 10% higher IPC. Then it will double its little cores. So, overall, I think you're basically looking at something that's like 30 to 40% more multi-threading and 10 to 15% more single Single threading. Now that sounds like it's hard for AMD to beat with Raphael, but people are forgetting that how good just 16 big cores could be. All of those Zen 4 cores are running at 5 gigahertz during this demo. 
right? Right. Lisa Sue doesn't just say it's boosting to five gigahertz. She says all of the cores are boosting to five gigahertz, presumably at the same time. So what do you think that means? Well, I've already told you, and I'm confident that Zen 4 will have, well, at least 20% more IPC, but likely more than 25% more IPC than Zen 3. Okay, so if all cores are boosting to five gigahertz or higher, for gaming, that's a big enough uplift that I think it could have in effect, not just, I don't know, let's say 40% better single threaded performance than Zen 3, but when it comes to like eight core versus eight core boosting, what games really need, yeah, 40% better. You know, Alder Lake's only about 10 to 15% better at gaming than Zen 3, at best, if you cherry pick. Off the time, it's not better. So I think that's enough for AMD to just eke out a single-threaded victory against Raptor Lake. And if each core is boosting, say, 10 to 20% higher than Zen 3 with 25% more IPC, well, remember, I said I think Raptor Lake will have around 40% more multi-threading than Alder Lake. Yeah, 20% times, you know, 25%. I think it could beat Raptor Lake in multi-threading. So I don't think there's a need to have a little more multi-threading than Raptor Lake. I think at the very least, Zen 4 is poised to be trading blows at a minimum with Raptor Lake in both single threading and both multi-threading. And so I don't know who wants a little more multi-threading. I think either you'll want the good 16-core gaming CPU or you'll want 32 cores of Zen 4C to crush Raptor Lake in multi-threading. That's what I would want to do if I was, and I'm not, but if I was AMD, I'd want to be able to have charts where I show 16 core, 120 watt Raphael beating like a 200 watt Raptor Lake in gaming by five to 10%. And then a separate chart that has a product where we don't show the gaming performance, but we say, hey, it beats Raptor Lake by like 30 or 40%. And heck, with 32 cores on AM5, it's still Zen 4 based, even if it's Zen 4 cloud, I'd assume each core is about as good as a Zen 3 core, so it's still game okay, and frankly, I think they could market it as like, I don't know, the 7960WX. They could say, this is Threadripper coming to AM5, which would be very nice when AMD seems to not have any Threadripper coming for over a year from now still. This is an interesting thing they could do. Bring entry-level Threadripper to AM5, maybe with expanded I.O. and like a, I don't know, X690 chipset above X670. And then they could start Threadripper maybe only as workstation from now on at 48 cores or higher. Bring the 32 core to AM5. And again, this is not me confirming that's what it is. And a few of my sources think this is unlikely. So please, websites that share what I'm talking about today. Please make sure you distinguish between what speculation, although informed speculation that I think is certainly possible, and what is literally confirmed by me. I did not confirm it's 32 cores in the thumbnail or title for a reason. But it's got to be something like that. Or yeah, maybe an 8 big core plus 16 little core. Or some sort of 24 core Zen 4. You know, maybe they actually make a high-end IO die on 5 nanometer and then put three eight-core chiplets. Yeah, that's another option, or it could certainly be a mega APU as well. I mean, with five nanometer, there's certainly enough transistor density to bring you something vastly more powerful than Rembrandt is, right? That's on six nanometer. It's only 12 compute units. I mean, it's only 200 millimeter squared. AMD's made CPUs that are monolithic, I think above 250 millimeter squared. So if they wanted to, to fit it into the AM5 socket on five nanometer, I think AMD could certainly make a 32 compute unit APU with 32 megabytes of infinity cache to mitigate only having DDR5. And yeah, that could be something on 5 nanometer that if, well, think about it, if Raphael's clocking all cores above 5 gigahertz, certainly conceivable it could be some RDNA 3 APU that has 32 compute units going above 3 gigahertz, truly bringing mid-range gaming to an APU form factor and doing so in a package where they don't need to worry about rising GDDR costs, right? And so they could maybe sell it for a reasonable price. Having said that, though, most of my sources think this power usage dictates that it's unlikely to be an APU because any APU would probably be designed for laptop first. And even if on laptop it had half the clock speeds, it's probably not a 95 watt APU on laptop or again, it's unlikely, but we can't discount that. That is an option of what this could be, which actually let's get to a fourth and final option for what this is. I have been cautioned that the 170 watt 
model may literally just be a fake product or something that they never really plan to have come out, that it could be something they're preparing motherboard makers with so they're sure the motherboards can support higher power Zen 5 CPUs or even Zen 6 CPUs in the future. So just don't discount that, that either it's some sort of placeholder for future products or it's something AMD may decide to never release. With one of my sources actually telling me that if Zen 4 beats Raptor Lake in multi-threading, that if it was some special multi-core product, that they might decide not to release it anyways, which is something AMD's been doing a lot. They're only releasing one V-Cache model of Zen 3 after all, aren't they? And yeah, so that's just something I wanted to get across today with my video at the end of this week, is touching on a leak that I could tell is probably bullshit. Although the 170 watt thing... I don't know that that necessarily is bullshit. It could certainly be some 32-core Zen 4C Threadripper on AM5 for consumers, or who knows if they use a special I.O. die and squeeze 24 normal Zen 4 cores in there, or it's a mega APU, or just some fake placeholder for future products that use more energy. But what it certainly isn't is what that WCCF Tech article leaked, because it just, according to people at AMD, literally doesn't make sense in how it's designed. And I wanted to make sure this rumor didn't go completely bonkers over the weekend. But that's gonna just about do it for this video. Don't worry, I will have a lot more to say about the RTX 3050 and RX 6500 XT desktop launches. Not just their performance and what they mean for the market, but their availability, which one you'll actually be able to buy at MSRP and for how long, and what's gonna happen with shortages moving forward this year. I actually think it's more complicated than people think. And people are missing a lot of things about these products. Uh, look, it's obvious. My sources that said that Navi24 was an MX killer meant for a laptop pushed up into a low-end desktop card is definitely true. I mean, only four lanes of PCIe and... Uh, just two outputs. It's obvious this was a low-end laptop card. But you know what also is going to be in low-end laptop cards? GA107 is going to be used in MX cards as well. So I, I think a lot of people are missing that both of these products are weaker than what we wanted in this segment. Both of them. And that they're being pushed into product tiers they were never meant to be in in the first place. But it's more nuanced than a lot of I think a lot of people realize. So we'll get to that. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel Moore's Lies Dead and ring the bell button so you don't miss that upcoming content. And make sure you subscribe to the Broken Silicon podcast. Give us a review on your podcast app of choice. It really does help. Speaking of Broken Silicon Hardware Unbox is coming up again soon to talk about the CES announcements and what we're looking forward to this year. If you're a patron, you'll get that early and ad-free and be able to submit questions for it tonight. So look out for that. Consider supporting us. We really can't do this without the support of our patrons. But um, otherwise, no matter what, to everyone watching, thank you for watching.